Hello, uh, good morning everyone. I'm creating this video to spread positivity or to spread the good news or, or the word of God despite the, the, the fear caused by the pandemic COVID-19. So we will be talking about something that is related or something that we can relate to in these times or in this kind of situation that we have today in the Philippines um, especially here in the in, in Metro Manila so I will be reading a story about Jesus calming the storm and after reading this I will be sharing my reflection so I'm not a priest so this is not called a homely but this is only a reflection so whatever I say uh, this is all my own opinion but I'm pretty sure that I am guided by the Holy Spirit in what I'm going to say so that I can touch the lives of many, so that I can inspire many through God's Word. Okay, so I will be sharing to you the story that can be found in Mark 4, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you, do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obeyed him. Okay, so based on the story, it simply tells us how Jesus rebuked the storm, the wind, and the waves. And um, at the other side of the story, there we have the disciples who are with Jesus for a long time, and yet they are doubtful. So I don't wonder when people tend to lose faith. Um, if, if, if the disciples lost their faith, even if they were with Jesus for quite some time, or even if they were with Jesus for, for the entire time of his ministry, what more the people who, who, were, who, who did not um, see Jesus in person? So, and, and that's okay. Um, now, uh, despite the scare of the virus, we need to, since we still don't have any medicine to really fight the virus, uh, we need to have faith. And faith for others may seem to be weird. Faith for others may seem to be something funny. Because faith is believing in things unseen. So when we have faith, we believe in those things that we cannot see things that, that are not visible in our own eyes. And Jesus said that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can move, um, we can command mountains. Imagine how small a mustard seed is. But that is enough for us to move mountains. Okay? Uh, so, there are two sides of the story. One, the Jesus who knows everything. The Jesus who is in control of everything. And the second one is the disciples who are believers but sometimes are doubtful. So this is what happened in the story. Uh, the disciples who were with Jesus for the entire time of his ministry still doubted. And... Um, for this reflection of mine, I am sharing with you something that I learned from Father Jojo. 
Um, he is a regular talk facilitator in the Lord's Flock Catholic Charismatic Community. Um, he is, and I am one of the members of the Lord's Flock. So, how how are we going to encounter fear? So, for us to be able to fight fear, we need an encounter with God to start a relationship with Him. What does this mean? We should not ask God to come to us. We also need to meet halfway sometimes. Sometimes we need to meet halfway. Um, when, when, when we are in the storm, we cannot just really sit down and let God do His thing. We also need to do our part. Now, if it takes meeting halfway with God, why not? After all, we need His help. Right? Okay. So, we need an encounter with God to start a relationship with Him. Every time we are scared, let us pray with faith. Because prayer without faith is useless. No, I, 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 I'm going to share this. Um, and it really happens to me too. Uh, many people tend to say, Lord God, I trust you. Lord God, I know that I will be healed. Or Lord God, I know that my family will be safe from this virus. Lord God, I, I cast all my worries and fears to you. And that's a good thing. It's a sign that you're having faith. And when we cast everything and, and when we cast our burdens to God, Let's have faith that He will work miracles in our lives. Let's have faith that He will take charge of everything that you've entrusted to Him. Let Him do His thing. You've already surrendered everything, so let Him do His own thing. But what happens is, we become like St. Peter. Remember St. Peter when, when he saw Jesus walking on waters and he tried to do the same thing? He was able to walk. But when St. Peter feared, there it started everything. Lumubog siya. Right? So, uh, also St. Thomas. After Jesus was resurrected, like when Jesus appeared to the apostles, St. Thomas was doubting. And it's the reason as to why he is being called uh, the Doubting Thomas. Saint Thomas had to had to ask Jesus to show to him uh, the signs or, or the wounds, and after Jesus showing it to him, he believed. So we don't need to to see miracles first before we believe in him. We need to believe in him first, and let him show miracles to us. Uh, the normal thing for people like us is, yun nga, we tend to become like St. Peter and we tend to become like St. Thomas who doubted, St. Peter who feared. Like, we do this every day. We pray, Lord, I trust everything to you. Lord, I, I cast all my fears and worries to you. But the next day, we go back to the basic. We fear again. We worry again. And it's like, you know what? You've already surrendered everything to God. You've already, you, you already cast everything to God. All your worries and fears to God. But then, there you are worrying again. Feeling the scare again. Or feeling the fear again. And it's like, Lord, kukunin ko na nga ulit yung problema ko. See? That's how weird people are. We tend to, we tend to have faith. And then, later on, lo- lost the, or lose the faith. So there, there's, those, are, those are reasons as to why miracles don't happen in our lives. Because we people are, are inconsistent. We will believe today, later on we will doubt. We will claim everything in faith, that everything will be granted to us by the Lord, but then later on we will doubt again. See, like for example, a simple parent who is um, 
asking God to provide uh, them their needs for the tuition, uh, for the tuition fee of their daughter who, who is currently at school. So, you will say, Lord, itinataas ko na po sa inyo. Alam ko po na bibigay mo sa amin yung pang tuition fee ng anak namin. So, that's a good thing. You've already raised everything to God. It's like surrendering to God. Like God is going to do His job. That God is, you trust that God will be providing you with your needs. And that's a good thing. But, as the deadline is fast approaching, and you still don't have the fund, and you still don't have the money, little by little, your faith deteriorates. Your faith weakens. You tend to question like, ibibigay kaya ni Lord sa akin to? Bukas na yung deadline na, wala pa din yung perang hinihingi ko sa kanya. See, you will see the difference between having consistent faith and inconsistent faith. Consistent faith help, helps us to become optimistic. It helps us become positive regardless of the situation. Ang nangyayari sa atin, kapag malayo pa, we have faith. Oh Lord, isang buwan pa naman yung deadline. Alam kong kaya mong i-provide sa akin yung needs ko na yan. But as the dead and fast approaches, like, for example, kung bukas na, at wala pa rin yung pera yung hihingi natin, there, nag-deteriorate yung faith natin. Our faith weakens. We tend to question like, ibibigay kaya ni Lord? Mababayaran ko kaya yung tuition ng anak ko? So that's a simple of questioning God. That's a question, or that's a fact. That's a supporting fact. For, for miracles to really not happen in our lives. For miracles not to really take place. For God not to show miracles in us. Because we are doubting Him. See? We are being defeated by, by our own worries. We are defeated by our own fears. We keep on saying, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I, I trust everything to you. Work miracles in my life. But as our expectation do not come true, there we are, starting to lose our faith in God. There we are, trying to question God. Lord, bukas na yung tuition fee, ano na? Wala pa din ba, Lord? Sige na nga, ako naman ang gagawa ng paraan. Don't get me wrong. When you ask God, you should also take actions. You should not just be sitting there and, and you know, wait for God to really hand over to you the money that you need. Hindi ganun dapat. So, gagawa pa din tayo. Ikilis pa din tayo. Pero to lose faith or to, to weaken your faith, it will not really help us at all. Let's trust in God. You know what? This is our problem. As small as the smallest thing on earth or as as small as um, yun, the smallest element or atom on earth. But our God is countless times bigger than everything. I know, that's it. I know that it's easy to say that. But that's a fact. Who can be greater than God? Who can be more powerful than God? Who can, who can show us miracles? Only God. Even the scientists, they discover um, cure for, for different kinds of illnesses from time to time. But who does give them the idea to come up with those medicines? It's not just science, it's their brains. And who give them the idea or, or the gift of intelligence? It's God. The Holy Spirit gave a lot of, a lot of kinds of gifts to everyone. So we, all, we are all gifted. And it's it's uh, really important for it's really important for us to really know our gift and use it for the good of all, and use it for evangelization. Like I just uh, saw a post last night um, indicating yung yung sign ng lalaki, sign ng babae, 
And yung sign ng gay nakalagay doon as yung sign ng TikTok. That's what I said. It's something that is stereotyping. Yung gilat ng lalaki ng TikTok ay bakla. Some are using TikTok to really evangelize. To speak about God because they know that TikTok is a trend. And who knows you can touch lives in there. Who knows you can inspire people in there. Who knows that through you, they will know God more. And they will be inspired to really know more about God. Balik tayo sa story. Yung sinabi ko nga two sides of the story. Yung isa, yung Jesus na who is in control of everything. And then the second was the doubting disciples. So Jesus Christ asked, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Wala ba kayong tiwala sa akin? So that was the sermon of God. Or that was the sermon of Jesus. And then he eventually rebuked the storm, the wind, the waves, the rains, and everything stopped according to his command. So see how powerful God is that a single word he utters and everything will follow. And if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can do the same thing. We cannot be Christ, but our faith can help us command those mountains command those, those those fears to really be God for COVID-19 to really be God in Jesus name and when we rebuke we should rebuke not just through the mouth but through faith and from the heart with a hundred percent faith or with a hundred percent drive of clay that everything will be fine in Jesus name that is how faith should be We should not give space or rooms for doubting. It's not really gonna help us at all. So, we, when we pray, we should pray with trust in God's promise. Kanina, ang sabi ko, pray with faith. Now, pray with trust. Sabi dito, why, why, do, we, why do we pray? When we have anxieties and fears. Sabi nga nung isang disciple doon sa story, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? Hindi ka ba nag-aalala na mamamatay tayo? So that was a sign of anxiety. That was a, a sign of him worrying for the lives of everyone in there, of everyone in the boat. So we need to pray with trust. Because if we pray without trusting God, then don't pray at all. You are just wasting your time. You're just insulting God. Like, you're praying, but then you, you, you're not believing that everything will be fine. Number next, pray with a surrendering heart. So, ito na yon. When we pray and cast everything to God, let's surrender everything. Wag nang babawiin. Ang dami natin ganyan eh. Ang daming mga taong ganyan. When they pray, ngayon, faithful sila. Kinabukasan, hindi pa rin na, nasasolve yung problema, babalik ulit sa pag-aalala. Lord, parang wala nga talagang pag-asa. So, inuulit ko, it's like, Lord, sa inyo problema ko, pero kinabukasan, Lord, akin na nga ulit. We, we tend to stress ourselves with the things that we cannot control. We tend to we, we tend to, ano, you, to rely on our own strength. We tend to delete God in the picture. We tend to forget that there is God who can do things better than us, who is more capable, who, who is countless capable than, than, than us. We cannot work miracles if we don't have faith. Jesus can work miracles in our lives. Maybe a lot of people are, 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 are umbaga, a lot of people feels that he is absent, that he is not present today. Of course, it's normal. Because we, we, we don't see him visible or we don't see him physically. But that's the role of faith, believing in things that are not seen. So when we pray, let's pray with a surrendering heart. Lord, I totally surrender all my fears to you. 
the fear of the scare or the, the fear of the virus the fear that I might get infected with the virus in, in, in any time I know that I'm safe I know that when I go to when I go outside to buy for food I know that everything I will touch will be disinfected I know that when I when I encounter someone who has the COVID-19 virus he will get healed too so that he will know or he or she will no longer spread the virus to others that's how faith works and also I need to share to you guys the importance of of, of praying every time like me I, I practice prayer prayer every time when I get to see people who, who, who are uh, who, who seem to have a really hard life I pray for them like when I see a beggar and I give them food I pray to them I pray for them Lord bless their lives may you use people to help them give their needs those are, those are simple prayers and of course um, a prayer inside your room is very important as well don't take for, don't take that for granted since it's one of the teachings of Christ that when you pray lock the doors and let no one see you but that doesn't mean that we, we can pray in, in public places of course you can just shout in there you will sound crazy pray through your mind when you say something when you see that there's something wrong with him Every time I see a paralytic man, a person with disability, I tend to pray for him. At the back of my mind, I pray for him. And that's, an, that's one way to exercise your, your, your prayerful life. Or your life with prayer. That's how important prayer is. So let's make it a habit. Let us wear the best costume, which is, which is prayer and faith. So again, pray with a surrendering heart. And, those, and, and, and so Jesus said, Peace, be still. And everything, the nature listened to his voice. Now, um, this, is, this is according to Father Jojo again. How to pray in the storms. Believe, trust, surrender. So I'm going to share with you guys. This happened last May 25, um, 2018. So I um, I was in a two-week vacation to fulfill my church obligation to to organize the choir for our fiesta in in Hibusong, Surigao del Norte, or Dinagat Islands, na pala ngayon. So I can really relate to this story because it happened to me. So March 28, I need to be back to work dito sa Manila. So March 25 pa lang, kailangan ko nang umalis sa Puntang Leyte. So we are in an island, so we need to cross waters for two hours. Uh, that time, that time, um, the weather was fine. That time, napakaganda nung araw. And so we started. Siguro mga nasa, hindi pa kami nangangalahati sa way namin, biglang nandilim. The skies were dark, the wind blew strong, as, as strong as, you know, mas, mas malakas pa yata sa salatang malakas. So in short, biglang nagkaroon ng storm. So ang dami namin pasahero, ang dami namin pasahero. May mga matatanda, may, mga, may bata na 3 year or, or 5 years old yata. At kasama ko sa bangka, yung kapatid ko, yung kuya ko, na siya yung nag-operate ng bangka. At yung ibang mga pasahero na kasama, taga-isla lang din. So kasama ko din din yung dalawang pamangkin ko, anak ng ate ko. Um, Karga-karga ko pa yung aso ko. So yung mga ano, yung, yung balance ng bangka, nagtutunugan na, so, sobrang lakas ng alon. And wala kami makita. Hindi na namin makita yung isla ng Leyte. We can no longer see the island of Leyte. Sabi ng kuya ko, sige kaya yan. Pero ang inaalala, ang inaalala ng kuya ko, wala kasi magbabawas nung tubig na pumapasok sa bangka kasi nagmamanayo siya eh. 
Kumbaga isang-isang malingat lang siya nung operations ng bangka. We can capsize in any time. So hindi niya kayang gawin yung magbawas pa ng tubig na pumapasok sa loob. Kaya yung isang binatili sa likuran niya, ang sinasabihin niya, kaso hindi rin sanay. Tuwan-tuwa pa nga siya dun sa malalaking alon kasi marunong na siyang lumangoy. Um, so yun, ang ginawa ng kuya ko, he decided to go our, on, on our way back home kasi hindi daw kakayanin. Ngayon yung challenge is kung paano kami makakabalik kasi yung alin nga malalaki. Um, alam yung ginagawa ko that time, bumabalansi ako pag gumaganon yung bangka, I, t- I, I tend to put my weight kung saan gumaganon siya sa so, nandun ako sa right side. So pag gumaganon siya pakaliwa, binibigatan ko yung right side para bumalansi siya pabalik. And at, and at the same time, I, I was praying to God. I even I was even singing still. Alam mo yung still ng hill song. Um, when the oceans rise and thunders roar, and it was really fitting for that particular situation. So I was singing that 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 song. And I was rebuking the storms, the wind, everything. I was trying to rebuke them with faith. Pero nandun pa rin yung takot ko. Yung takot hindi para sa sarili ko, yung takot para sa pang, para dun sa mga pamangkin dalaga, yung mga bata pa yun. At the back of my mind, as I was rebuking the wind, I was also having doubts in my in, at the back of my mind, like, what if to maob, what if yung, yung mga ganong worries. So, parang, ito yung, ito yung best picture ng talagang nagdadasal ka, pero you still lose your faith in God. Lost, you, you, you tend to lose your faith in God or lost your faith in God. Uh, pero, yun yung natutunan ko. Yun yung natutunan ko na magtiwala. And I really felt God working miracles as if we were on the boat. Like when I said, Lord, alam ko makakaliko kami, Lord. Lord, alam ko makakabalik kami. Naramdaman ko yung, yung alon talaga is medyo nagbehave siya ng konti para lang makaliko kami. He gave way for us para makaliko, makaliko kami pabalik. Kasi hindi makahanap ng tempo yung kuya ko pagliko ng pabalik. Kasi nga, pwede kami tumaob sa, sa, laki ng, sa, sa laki ng mga alon. But as I claim, as I rebuke the winds, Sobrang galing ni Lord. Talagang nagkataon dumiit yung mga alo ng kahit papano at nakabalik kami. And we all arrived safe. Natatawa pa nga ako sa dalawang pamangkin eh, kasi um, kumakanta pala sila sa likuran ko din. Kumakanta ako ng steel, yung dalawang pamangkin kumakanta din ng bayan umawit tsaka ng what a beautiful name. So, This is a story that I can really relate. Kumbaga, how to pray in the storms, believe, trust, surrender. Even if I fail in certain categories of this of, of this prayer of, of this prayer or, or of this way of prayer, kasi dun sa believe nag, nag-doubt ako eh. Dun sa trust nag-doubt pa din ako. I surrendered, but I doubted in some way. Pero towards the end, nanay pa rin naman yung yung pagiging faithful ko sa kanya. When I rebuke the wind, the waves, at medyo nakinig siya, it was not me, it was God who performed miracle. It was God who says like, yan, yan ang gusto ko sa'yo anak, keep on the faith, and I'll show you the miracle. Ayun, sobrang naramdaman ko yung presensya niya, niya doon nung lumiit yung mga alam at nakaliko kami pabalik. Kasi kung hindi kami makakahanap ng tiyempo, kung hindi ti tiyempo yung kuya ko, Diyos ko, pagliko, sobrang tataob kami. But God, made away and so I glorify his name so in times like this this is all we need let's pray with faith and with trust let's believe trust and surrender sometimes we kumbaga the problem seem to be bigger kasi minsan tayo pag nakaupo tayo di ba at nakatingin tayo sa isang mataas na building or sa isang mataas na bagay. Ang tingin natin doon, sobrang laki na hindi natin kaya. Because we are seeing it na nakaupo tayo. But when we tend to stand up, do natin ma-realize na, ay, maliit lang pala to. So when we have faith, 
hindi na tayo nakaupo pag, pag mayroon tayong faith kay Lord, hindi na tayo nakaupo. When you don't have faith, you're, you're sitting. But when we have faith, we tend to be standing up. And we see things from up above. Nakikita natin yung, yung mga, yung mundo. Dahil nakatayo tayo. At makikita natin yung problema, yung problema pala, maliit lang pala. Kasi the problem with people is that we tend to magnify the problem. Binubusisi natin yung problema. Nagpo-focus tayo sa problema. We don't focus on God. And when we focus on our problems, dun siya nagiging toxic. Okay, so medyo mahaba na yung talk. Medyo mahaba na yung sinasabi ko. But yun lang naman ang gusto kong sabihin. Kapag nagdasal tayo, kapag isinuko natin lahat ng takot natin kay Lord, when we surrender all our worries, our fears to God, don't take it back again. When I say don't take it back again, when the morning comes, when tomorrow comes, never worry again. Never fear again. You have already surrendered everything, right? So why don't, why not be calm? Why not be at peace? Let us stop the, let's stop the, yung daily routine na we will have faith today and tomorrow we will lose the faith. Walang mangyayari sa mga buhay-buhay natin pagkaganoon. We are sinners, yes. Some people might say, I'm not praying because I'm a sinner. Well, everyone sin. Everyone sins. All of us are, are, are committing sins from day to day. But the most important thing is, we know how to reconcile. We, we know reconciliation. We know how to ask for forgiveness. Because when we sin, yung blessings na Lord na puputol, it's the, it's the hindrance of receiving the overflowing blessings of God. So, iwasan na natin yung mga ayoko na magsimba, bakit naman si ganito? Ang pangat naman ang ugali. You don't look at the person, look at God. Fix your eyes on God. Not on the people. If they're to jump on a cliff, are you going to do the same? No. Ay, yung mga pare na mumalesya ng bata. If they're going to hell, are you going to hell as well? No. We are all accountable sa sarili nating salvation. So, hindi ka pwede mapunta sa impyerno dahil lang yung pare nang mamulas siya ng bata. Kaya hindi ka nagsimba. Tuluyan ka nang nawalan ng faith kay Lord. So, that's it for right today, brothers and sisters. I hope you like the message of my video. It's very long. I hope you'll find time to really listen to this. I know that in my own little way, I was able to share my own story. I was able to somehow inspire a lot. Kasi marami ng negativity. So let's spread positivity in the word of God. Maraming salamat po. Be blessed. Be safe. I know that by the end of the month, let's claim it. Wala nang COVID-19 and we will all get back to work. Maraming salamat po. 